This video covers every major event, plot twist and the general story direction of Alan Wake and its two DLCs. I'm trying to keep this as short as possible and will only talk about what's necessary for you to understand what Alan Wake is about. Keep in mind that the game has a very complex story with many facets that are often open to interpretation and imagination. Let's get into this. The game starts with an introduction of the main character, Alan Wake, a famous crime novelist who is struggling with writer's block, a condition in which an author is unable to produce new work and experiences a creative slowdown while also facing alcoholic issues. His wife, on the other hand, has another issue entirely, as she has extreme fear of darkness. Alan? Alan, please check the fuse box. I'm right here. I'm on it, honey. To overcome this difficult time, Alan and Alice decide to vacation in the scenic town of Bright Falls. On the way to Bright Falls, Alan experiences a dream where he's pursued by dark entities while also learning that light can repel them. <gasps> Baby, just another nightmare. Welcome to the O Dear Diner. Hi, I was... Upon reaching Bright Falls, instead of meeting the cabin owner Carl Stuckey, a creepy elderly lady in dark attire approaches Alan, claiming she's here on Carl's behalf and hands him the cabin keys. But I have the key for you and instructions on how to get to the lake. Okay. Interestingly, as the couple leaves the diner, the actual Carl yells that they have forgotten their keys. Shortly after arriving at the lakeside cabin, which didn't really look like they expected, Alice surprises Alan with the revelation that the trip's true purpose is for Alan to meet the renowned therapist Dr. Emil Hartman. Feeling deceived and disappointed, Alan goes outside to calm down, only to rush back in when hearing Alice's terrified scream. Alice. Alice? He witnesses a dark force dragging Alice into the lake and jumps in trying to save her, but he didn't. Waking up later in his crashed car without any memory of how he got there, he soon stumbles upon a page from an unfinished book titled Departure. Departure is also the title he was going to use for his next novel that he never started writing. Alan soon realizes that the events of the pages he's finding are coming true and the shadowy figures he's encountering are townsfolk possessed by a dark force. We will refer to these figures as Taken from now on. He runs into the landlord, who to Alan's regret is also Taken. Alan finds out that he can fight off the landlord or Taken with a flashlight or any light source. Shortly after this, Alan runs into the town sheriff, who, after he explains his situation, informs him that no island or cabin exists on Cauldron Lake, at least not anymore. The island got destroyed due to an earthquake caused by a volcano eruption back in 1970. Mr. Wake, have you seen Stucky, the guy who owns this place? I realized I couldn't tell her what had happened in the forest. She wouldn't have believed me. And then she wouldn't have helped me with Alice. After a night at the police station, an anonymous caller claims to have kidnapped Alice, demanding the rest of the departure pages in exchange. Alan's friend and agent, Barry Wheeler, joins him, but at first doesn't really believe Alan's story. I don't like it, Al. I don't like any of it. It's not good. In fact, it's the absolute opposite of good. A bit after this, Alan meets the kidnapper at the designated location, but the meeting doesn't go well since Alan doesn't have the remaining pages and the two fight before the kidnapper manages to run away. As Alan and Barry retrieve more pages, they get the unwanted attention from FBI agent Nightingale. Alan doesn't understand why he's being chased by the cops and the FBI and manages to escape for now. After a quite lengthy and dangerous way through the forest, Alan meets the supposed kidnapper again to deliver the pages he's found so far, only to find the creepy elderly woman tormenting the kidnapper. The kidnapper confesses he doesn't and never had Alice, before they are both consumed by a dark whirlwind. Coming to his senses in Dr. Hartman's clinic, Alan is told his experiences are delusions coming from his grief over Alice, and what he is experiencing is a projection of his subconscious mind that is trying to deal with Alice's death. In the clinic, Alan meets two crazies who assured him that what he is experiencing is in fact very real, and he decides to believe them instead of the doctor. So they give him quite a bit of important information and directions. 
Shortly after this, the facility is overrun by the darkness, and with Barry's aid, Alan escapes. They then soon learn from locals about an entity known as the Dark Presence trapped in Cauldron Lake, that is trying to escape by using the lake's power to turn fiction into reality. Back in 1970, a poet called Thomas Sane, the figure in the diving suit, and his wife Barbara Checker, that now is the old woman that Alan is encountering, were staying at the same cabin that Alan and Alice stayed at. Thomas Sane's wife drowned in the lake and one week later, the island vanished along with Sane due to the aforementioned earthquake. That earthquake is said to be caused by Sane, who tried to ride his wife out of the dark presence and back into reality, but failed. When Alan and Barry get drunk at a shelter, Alan finally begins to remember what happened. He recalls the dark presence forcing him to ride departure during the week he couldn't yes. remember. So the time right. span between Alan jumping into I'll the sea it. and then waking up I'll in his car back. was one week. The footage you're seeing right now should give you a bit of an understanding of how Alan actually ended up in that car crash. Yes. All right. I'll fix it. I'll bring her back. No. I wrote it. I remembered it all now. In the dark, I'd written for days, a week, almost a complete manuscript of a novel entitled Departure. Jagger had been my editor, whispering in my ear, making sure that the unfolding story would make her more and more powerful. I thought I was saving Alice. Even with the cobwebs she put in my head, some part of me had been aware enough to write my escape into the story, to bring a light into the cabin to release me before I could finish, to interrupt the horror story before the ending, where darkness consumed everything and everyone. Zane was weak and far away, but I had written him into the story and his light had been enough to set me free. It isn't here now. I'm here because it was written. I brought the light to set you free. You must hurry. You will know I'm here. It will be back soon. She stole the skin of my armor a long time ago. She looks so old. I had woken up, confused and groggy, my mind consumed by darkness and fear. All I could do was to escape. The week spent in the cabin had taken its toll. I was barely conscious and fading fast. had to have cost Zane terribly, thrown him even deeper into whatever dark place he now haunted. But he had managed to weaken the dark presence, kept me safe that night. Alan and Barry are arrested by Nightingale, but they're taken attack and drag Nightingale away. The Sheriff, now believing in the Dark Presence, aids Alan in finding Cynthia Weaver, an acquaintance of Thomas Sane. About time! Young man, I've been waiting a very long time for you. All of this is a much lengthier process than you might imagine now, but the essence of it is that it's Weaver the guides well them to the well-lit room. room which has the clicker. Take it, and I won't need to worry about the room anymore, because 6 and 33 and 118 need changing soon, and I don't want to climb up the ladder to change them, because it's very late, and I'm tired, and if you take it, I won't... A light switch that, powered by Alan's writings, can defeat the Dark Presence. Alan makes his way to Cauldron Lake, entering the dark place where thoughts become reality. It is here where we learn from saying that Alan has an evil doppelganger called Mr. Scratch. It has no heart. It's filled with darkness. It 
must fill its heart with light. Alan confronts and defeats Barbara Chegger using the clicker. The only thing left for Alan to do is to finish the story, but that's easier said than done. Not everything you write will become reality. The story needs to be believable and dramatic. If it isn't, the story will change itself. Unlike Sane, who didn't notice and therefore failed his attempt, Alan knew he had to balance the story. So he rescues Alice but traps himself in a dark place, sacrificing himself. This is a heavily discussed phrase that has a lot of fan theories behind it, and even of the oldies years and expansions. That phrase is still open to interpretation and imagination. If you're still confused at this point, don't worry, you're kinda supposed to be. Now let's take a very brief look at the two DLCs, so you get a bit more clarity. After the main game, Alan remains trapped in a surreal dark place in Bright Falls. Welcome to the Guided by Zane via a cell phone, Alan navigates the shifting landscape, contending with the maniacal version of himself on TVs, who endangers him with the Taken. An imaginary barrier from Alan's subconscious assists him. Zane reveals Alan's own fears created this chaos. Oh, an echo, a hallucination, the dark no, presence. The dark presence is not responsible for this. You are making this happen. You're trapped in your own nightmares. You are fighting yourself. The TV version of Alan embodies this irrationality. Facing a monstrous TV entity at the end, Alan defeats it, only to find himself back in the cabin. Why is this happening to me? Blood. No. No. There's no way out. No way out. No way out. No way out. I need to get out of here. In Special 2, the writer, Alan, understands his role. Sane informs him that the rational Alan must overthrow the irrational Alan in the cabin to escape. Journeying to a lighthouse, he confronts illusions and the Taken. Near the cabin, imaginary Barry warns Alan to reject old illusions. After finally confronting and merging with his irrational self, Alan commits to not giving in to delusions again. Why is this happening to me? What is happening to me? <laughs> Just like that, my mind was clear. Zane had been right. I could think clearly again. But I couldn't survive in this place the way he had, and I might not make it back a second time. Leaving this place would be hard. Maybe impossible. It wouldn't take much for my thoughts to stray again. It was too easy to get lost in the dark place. Before, I was ready to curl up and die, let myself slip away. But here I was, the yet unwritten future waiting to unfold before me, a sequel to Departure. 
My name is Alan Wake, and I'm a writer. Alan Wake has a very complex plot, but this video should have helped you to at least understand what the main plot is about, and should absolutely be enough for you to have a good time in Alan Wake 2. Anyways, if you did find this helpful, a like or a comment is greatly appreciated. See ya!